Dr. Burt's a unique individual, and uh, when we look at that time period, there are a lot of unique individuals that seem to have come on the scene since that time. He was, he was born in Mississippi, and he was the third child of some ex-slaves. Uh, he went to Jackson College, and he moved on from there to go to college that was actually Walden University in Nashville. Uh, he had to drop out for a period of time because he got sick with uh, typhoid fever. Mm -hmm. But he was able to go back and finish. Later on, he went to Meharry, graduated, got his medical degree. And uh, after that, it was, it was just one thing after another. He, was, he had an entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, he also had an educational spirit, but uh, in 1902, he relocated here to Clarksville. 1904, he opened the, uh, he bought the current house, converted it into a residence, and it became an infirmary for his African-American patients. And then in 1906 is when he opened the infirmary as the first hospital in Clarksville, Montgomery County. Dr. Bird himself was, you know, not only an entrepreneur, but he was also very benevolent. And uh, I'm told, I understand that he gave a donation for the establishment of a high school. Uh, prior to all of this happening, there were already schools for the colored, as, as we were called at that time, all around the county. There were, there were schools really hosted by churches. Matter of fact, the first school for black children was actually uh, hosted by St. Peter AME Church. Then uh, in about 1894, I think it was, 1894, uh, a consolidated board of, educa board of education was established, consolidated meaning that they decided to actually have a board of education that considered both white and black children and they decided to open a public school for black children. And that school was located on a piece of property there at the convergence of 10th and Franklin Street, where Bert Cobb is now. They opened the elementary school. From the time Bert opened in 1923 until it closed in 1970, if you were a black student in Montgomery County, then you went to Bert. And so because of that, over time, population increases caused them to have to build. They needed a new building. And so they moved from, they moved Burt from where it was, co-located with Cobb, Bailey Cobb Elementary, over to some property that was provided to them from the Landers family. My experience in the 60s, it was much like when you look at school days or <laughs> an old, old movie from that period of time. A normal school day for us, we did things almost like a unified family. If we did it, everybody did it all at the same time. When we would have a, uh, a pep rally, it would be a whole school. And some of the moments that are clearest to me are the times when things that were happening because of the school would expand our horizons. Uh, being in the band, we got to travel to other parts of the state. We'd see what other schools were like, what other students were like. Uh, integration had to happen, it was still new, so you know, we could, now we're, we're getting to go to the schools where they have everything, or at least they, we were told they have everything and we didn't have anything, and then some, a lot of times we'd find out that's not true. One thing that is unique about the Bird Alumni Association is rather than it just being regional, it's almost like a college alumni association. It's national. And so uh, it spread its tentacles all over the country, affected areas that, I mean, if we, if we had time, we could delve into where have, have Bird graduates gone. Uh, I've got a I've got a whole set of cousins. All of them graduated from Burt. My cousin, my first cousin, who is now the current treasurer of the Alumni Association, he was a brain surgeon. We've got dentists, mayors. I'm chief of staff for the city right now. So Burt graduates are everywhere in places you wouldn't even think. And we've done everything. 
not at all hampered by having graduated from Burt. Even with the, the, the scholarship, I look to myself and I think that the scholarship has rev- provided financial assistance to, I think, about 51 students over the course of the time that it's been in existence.